What's good, people? In this video, I'm going to talk about state updates in React being asynchronous and what that actually means for you as a React developer right now. What's good, people? Welcome to Rock Codes. I'm Rasheen. I want to help you code something awesome. We're going to go ahead and start a, a real basic example um, to illustrate asynchronous updates in React. Um, all we're going to do is get back our dog, C, dog API that we used last time. So I'm going to copy this guy and we're going to just start setting this thing up. So we need some state and I'm just kind of freestyling here. So I know we're going to need a dog. It's going to be a use state. And the goal here is really just going to be uh, just have to have a basic app so we can illustrate fetching some data and show how that is asynchronous as well as uh, updating some state once we fetch that data, which also is asynchronous. So we need to use state and use effect from React. And we also will need to set up our use effect. And we won't fill out any dependencies right now. We'll just use fetch with the URL we just stole. Don't need the name of the button in there. All right, so I am going to, eh, I don't need async await here. I'll just use dot then. That should give me the response which then I returned the response.json, which then I will actually have the data I need and I can just set dog on that. And let's format this so it doesn't look so ridiculous. So we have an error on use effect because we're calling set dog, which is not in our dependencies array. It's a little weird. All right, and then we have our, so ultimately when this component loads, this effect will automatically run because they all run at least once and it will try to fetch some data from the dog API. Now, this does nothing yet. Um, we, we haven't really got anywhere, but this actually will show us uh, how you can get confused. Okay, so let's say, right, um, that I'm just getting my app going and I want to know, okay, I don't really know what this API response looks like. And I don't want to refer to the documentation. I just want to see what does this end up setting the value of dog to be after this API request. So what I probably will think to do is console log, right? Cause that's the primary debugging tool of JavaScript developers. I'm going to console.log dog here because I know that I've fetched it here. I've set it here, so it should be available here for me to log. And we're gonna ignore these dependency errors for now. Um, they are very important and critical and you should never ignore them intentionally in, in anything you plan on sharing with the world. But right now, they're just gonna get in the way for this illustration. So we're gonna console log dog. So let's look at our console and let's refresh the page. Huh, that's weird. It, I think it's logging undefined. Let's make this a little bit more clear. Let's do one of these. We'll refresh. That's very weird. It, for a second, I don't know if you guys saw that, it showed some data, but now when we refresh, it's saying my dog is undefined. But we definitely set dog here before we're logging. What is going on? Well, I'll tell you what is going on. State updates are asynchronous. Also, API requests, such as this fetch request, are asynchronous. So what's happening here and why it's so confusing is we're fetching the data, we're getting a response, and we're putting that response into our state. 
And this is actually a, a more complex example because not only are we intertwining an API, the, the asynchronous nature of an API request, we're, we're intertwining that with an asynchronous nature of setting state and updating state in React. So we get the data, we set it in our state, we try to log it, and by the time we get to this line 12 to console log, there is no guarantee that any of those previous things is done. It's possible the data hasn't come back yet. It's possible the data did come back and it just hasn't updated the state yet. So if you if this is how you try to troubleshoot your React application or just even in developing it and you're just trying to, you know, test your way along and see how things are flowing, you will be very confused. For instance, if we make a change, we can probably get this to show, see, we make a change, our development server reloads. And if you look down here behind my head, not only we see that the dog is undefined, but then we also see that we got some data. So if you were actually developing an app here and you were just making changes and going along your way, you would be totally confused as to what's going on. And I totally understand why. And this happens all the time. So if this happens to you, you are not alone. So what, what's the proper way to handle this situation? Um, the, the main way that I always recommend is if you want to see what your data is or what your, let me rewind. If you want to know what your state values are, use them in your return, put them in your JSX because that's what you're setting them for anyway. A React app is created for you to get some data that represents the state of your application. You update that state and then it renders for you. This is the whole point of using React. So in this case, we don't really know what this uh, dog is going to be. We're, we're assuming some type of J JSON shape. We're still not going to refer to the docs. So we can do something weird like one of these and we could JSON dot stringify dog here so now you can see way up here at the top this is what the response is now if we refresh we're always going to get the correct value that was updated in state because your jsx always will have that value available but even every time state updates your jsx is going to update so even if that value is initially undefined or you're doing all types of stuff there ultimately that value will be returned and your JSX will reflect that. And you don't have to think too hard about how that works. Um, and as you can see, even in this initial example, uh, where is it at? The console log is showing that it's undefined. But if you look up here, okay, can't go that far. If you look up here, definitely that this is the data we're looking for. So now we can see what the shape of that response is. So another way that you can uh, get what that value is reliably, uh, get what a state value is reliably is to create a use effect that depends on that state value. So I'm going to throw a use effect effect here and I want to know when dog updates, right? And I will just console.log in here, the dog, and let's get rid of this one. Well, we can keep this one. We can say my first dog here, and then here we'll say my second dog is here. So now let's go ahead and refresh this app. And you'll see, and, and this kind of illustrates the flow of React as well. So both of these effects run as soon as your app loads. And you'll see we get two logs for undefined. Because React is, because this is asynchronous code, nothing is waiting for this fetch to complete. Nothing is going to wait for this state to update. These are asynchronous. That means we throw it away. We do not wait for it to come back. We move on. So this executes, set the, the API request isn't done yet. The state update isn't done yet. We log undefined. This executes dog is undefined initially because that's what we told it to be our app renders. Okay. However, as you can see here behind my head, so conveniently located is 
the the effect then updates. So the API request comes back, the state updates, and now dog gets changed. So this effect, because dog changed, will now update the new version of dog, which is here, which is what we wanted to see. I don't usually do this because I think creating an entire use effect just to look at a variable is a little excessive. Um, and you know, you could end up forgetting that you did that or making your code more confusing as you go if you keep testing things like this. But you know, if you if if the nature of your project already has you looking at the state value in a use effect, then you can just keep in mind that well, I have a use effect that depends on this value. Let me log it in that effect. Otherwise, just render the data. Another way you might uh, want to check for your data is if you actually know how to render it. So in this case, we know that the message on the API request, we're actually looking at docs, isn't this fantastic? The message is just the URL for the image. So we could actually modify our code a little bit here and we could say data or yeah, we could say data. And instead of just setting dog to whatever that big data block is, we could do one of these. Actually, we could destructure message from that data. So now when we set dog, it's only the URL of the image and we could throw an image in here. I don't know how to do an image tag. It's been so long. There we go. We'll probably need an alt. That's why it's mad at us because we're not being accessible here. So here, uh, vision impaired people who have no idea what that is on the screen will say that it's a cute dog. Boom. So now because we already knew what our app is supposed to do and we were familiar already with the shape of our data, instead of trying to log, did we get a response for the data? Just put it in your state correctly and again, use it in your JSX. It is the simplest way to make sure that you are not confusing yourself and running around in circles because you're forgetting that API requests are asynchronous, asynchronous, react state updates are asynchronous. If you try to log a value from state immediately after updating it, it will not work. It will not work. You will be very confused. What's good people. This is raw edits and I was watching this video editing it and I wanted to go back and show you guys kind of break down this, this fetch example, because I know a lot of you use async await and having it all together in this fetch function may or may not be a little confusing and you may not be able to see the full picture here. So let's go ahead and uh, use async await in our use effect here. Um, we'll just do a function called get dog. And then we immediately just call that function in the use effect. Now, as you can see here, it's still the same situation. So we have this async function we've created. We go in here, we call uh, fetch, we await that response. We, we think that we have the message here and then we set dog with that message. So then we call that function and it would seem as though just looking at this code that you would be able to access that state, that state variable that we set within our async function that we just called, but still you would not be able to access it. So it looks a little different when you convert it to async await. Um, and I think it's a very common pattern to use. And one might think just by the way that the code looks synchronous, that obviously after calling this function, that is uh, that is marked async and I've done all the awaits in there and I've set my state in there 
that that state should currently be available or immediately be available. And that's still not the case, whether you use async await or not. So I just wanted to make to make sure to clear up that point before we put this video out. And then you guys come for me in the comments. Back to the main video. Um, one thing that uh, may be important to note here is in class components, you were able to, and this is not going to be valid, but I just want to illustrate the code to you guys. I'm sorry, this has probably been super hard to read this whole time. In class components, you were able to do set state. What in the blue blazes set state? Why do you keep doing this to me? All right, so you were able to do set state and you could do like, I don't even remember how set state works, guys. Okay, so you'd have like dog would be some type of data that we got, say, right? And you could also pass a function after that to be executed immediately after that state update. And somebody check me if I'm wrong on the syntax here. This is class components, not function components, not hooks. In class components, you could do this. And you saw a lot of people leveraging this feature. And to me, it is a, it's not a good feature to use. Um, because in class components, you have component did update, which performs a similar function to use effect. And it's probably what you should have used in class components. But if you're coming to function components from class components at this point, and this is how you were doing things to make sure that something happened when a particular uh, state update occurred, your best bet now would be to go ahead and use that use effect and just make it depend like we had a second ago here that use effect would depend on whatever item you are depending on for that update and then in here you can do whatever you want because now you know okay this effect runs when this updates i can go here and do some stuff you might even need to compare is uh if dog or if not dog so it's not defined yet just don't do anything and then here you would do amazing stuff with dog like pet them or cuddles or fetch whatever um all right so i think that's going to be it for today guys and gals and everyone else if this was helpful please let me know give it a video a thumbs up um leave me a comment if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe and uh, as always peace